Cześć. Jestem Grażyna. Miło mi. Grażyna starts the first episode by saying Cześć, jestem Grażyna. She uses the word cześć, which is the most popular uh, Polish informal greetings, and it means hi. Um, very often cześć is also used as by uh, when it's used together with pa over here. Uh, so it's an informal greeting, uh, very commonly used in everyday Polish. And together with cześć pa, it also means by. Cześć is not the only greeting uh, that we can, informal greeting that we can use uh, in Polish. We can also use hejka, the one here. Hejka or just hej, uh, that's also absolutely fine. So either hejka or hey, um, but there are many other ways of greeting uh, and uh, bidding farewell to someone. Cześć uh, means hi, uh, and as I mentioned, it's an informal greeting, so uh, as Polish distinguishes between the formal and informal type of speech, uh, we cannot use this uh, greeting in business-like, professional situations, but only when we refer to someone we know, um, our friend or acquaintance, uh, someone younger, much younger than us. This is a very casual um, podcast, so therefore Grażyna chooses cześć instead of a dzień dobry, Państwu, so uh, this one together with this one. Uh, if she would have addressed um, listeners in this way, that would have meant good day or good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and that would have been a little bit too much, if you know what I mean. Uh, it would have been very, very professional. She would have had to carry on with sir or madam, um, mister, miss, uh, and that would be uh, definitely uh, too professional. So, therefore, she chooses cześć. Grażyna finishes her episode by uh, saying miło mi. Um, it's a pleasure, nice uh, to meet you. Um, I'll explain uh, a little bit more about this expression in the further slide. Uh, so she doesn't really say bye in this episode, but if she, if she would have, then um, she would have chosen uh, either na razie, this one here, pa, here, or just cześć pa. As I said at the very beginning, we can combine these two together. So let's summarize. Um, in this part... Um, uh, we covered uh, the first word uh, that Grażyna uses in the first episode, which is cześć. Uh, it means hi, uh, but it also used uh, as by, especially uh, when combined with pa. So cześć, hi, cześć, pa, by. It's an informal greeting used in uh, everyday situations uh, when referring to someone who is younger, uh, who we know, who is our friend or acquaintance. In the next slide, I'm going to analyze the grammar uh, behind the first episode uh, and introduce the verb butch. So let me start this slide by uh, saying that I'm going to simplify uh, the grammar subject as much as I can for you. This doesn't mean that the Polish grammar is simple um, and you're not going to learn much. Uh, to the contrary, you are going to learn a lot, really a lot, but in your own pace, step by step, uh, without being um, overloaded by uh, too much information, especially at the very beginning, and being confused by it. So um, there's no point in me giving you, uh, at this stage, um, uh, the types of conjugations in Polish, for instance, or the endings of infinitives, talking about um, how many uh, we've got and uh, what they are. It's pointless. It could be off-putting, it could be confusing, uh, but you are 
going to learn about it in the, in the future. So just bear with me, uh, take it step, step by step. You have to learn to walk before you run. So let's start on the verb bitch, which means to be, bitch. And bitch is an infinitive. Uh, what does it mean? Infinitive. An infinitive is an uh, unaltered, unchanged um, form of a verb. Uh, so nothing has it, has been done to it yet. Um, uh, it looks as it would appear in a dictionary, if you like. So bitch is an infinitive. However, its changed forms are here in white and they are changed accordingly to who is speaking in a sentence, who is a subject, who is speaking, and who could be speaking. Well, ja, I could be speaking. Ja means I. T is you. On, he. Ona, she. Ono, it. I'm going to omit uh, these additional words uh, here for now, so bear with me. And here in plural, who could be speaking in plural? We've got m, which is we, v, which means you, plural, as in you people. And here we've got oni and one, both mean they, but ona are reserved for uh, feminine nouns only. And again, in future, I'll explain it all to you. Grażyna says, Cześć, jestem Grażyna. Uh, jestem, I am. Uh, and although I just said, I am, you can clearly hear that in the post podcast, Grażyna doesn't say, ja jestem. She doesn't include, ja, I uh, in it. She doesn't because she doesn't have to. Uh, jestem, form jestem, is only reserved for ja, as you can see. It's the only form that ends with the letter M. Uh, so uh, Grażyna doesn't have to uh, use I uh, as well, ja. Jestem is absolutely enough. Jestem means I am. And it's exactly the same with the second form, uh, jesteś. It's again, it's the only one that uh, ends with s accent, consonant sh, jesteś, which means you are, and that's the reason why these words we call them personal pronouns are in brackets. Uh, you don't have to include t in jesteś either. So jesteś. Is absolutely enough again. Uh, however, if you look at jest, it's shared between on, ona, ono, and other words. Uh, and in this case, we have to um, use, we have to include the person because otherwise it would be uh, very unclear uh, who we are talking about or referring uh, to. Um, Unless it's very clear from the context, but if it's not, the person needs to be included. So, on yes, he is, ona yes, she is, and ono yes, it is. In plural, uh, we have again the same situation with m and v, so we and you. We've got reserved forms for these personal pronouns. So we can say jesteśmy, we are, uh, instead of my jesteśmy, right? And then jesteście, for you are, uh, without adding uh, the. They, uh, so oni, either oni uh, or one, share the form są, a, which is R. Um, so we have to be specific here and include the person. So either oni son or one son. Let us look at the additional words now that I omitted at the very beginning of the slide. Um, 
the word to um, means this and it's not a personal pronoun like uh, on, ona or ono. Uh, it just means this and it uses um, the uh, form yes of the verb to be. So in order to say this is in Polish you would say to jest. Now, um, Polish uses the formal and informal uh, way of addressing people. So, um, as I mentioned in the uh, greetings and farewell slide, uh, and in order to say, um, for instance, um, Sir, you are very welcome, you would use the third person singular form of any verb, right? And sir in Polish, or sir, mister, means pan. And pani uh, would be a ms or madam. So you would, uh, you would use the third uh, person singular form. In this case, uh, for the verb bitch is yes, uh, in order, um, uh, when addressing uh, someone professionally, um, formally. Uh, so, um, you are very nice, mister, sir, pan jest bardzo miłe. You wouldn't use you are from this child here, but that's more advanced. Uh, that's something that we, you'll learn uh, in the near future. And that's not something that I want you to worry about at this stage. It's just for you uh, to understand and to know why it's there. Because uh, at some point when you do learn uh, the formal way of addressing uh, people, then this chart and this pani and pan here will be very useful to you. And it's exactly the same for plural. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, or ladies, uh, for instance, will be on this part here, a third person plural. There's another form for ladies only, panie, it's not included here, uh, but again, at this stage, don't worry about it. Um, it's only here because in the near future, uh, you will find it very useful. It will be very, very helpful for you. But at this stage, don't worry about it at all. Let's summarize then. Jestem means I am in Polish. We don't have to include the personal pronoun ja in it as um, jestem with its ending m uh, is reserved only for that first person singular. So again, jestem, I am. Our last slide introduces the expression mi wo mi. You may have heard or uh, may have been taught that it means nice to meet you. And it's not really um, the truth. Uh, the verb to meet doesn't even appear in this expression. Uh, what it literally means is nicely to me. Not to meet, but to me. So it doesn't really make much sense um, in, in English. When it comes to expressions and uh, even more so um, idioms, the last Thing that you want to do is to translate them literally. Uh, what you want to do is to learn the meaning uh, behind them because translation could be extremely confusing and it would make a sense when it comes to idioms anyway. Uh, so rather than translate, uh, try um, uh, learning the meaning. And the meaning behind me or me uh, would be it's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Um, so you would use this expression when introducing yourself to someone uh, or when someone is introduced to you. More complicated info now for those of you who are a little bit more advanced. Uh, miwo is an adverb. Um, lots of adverbs in Polish and with the vowel o. Miwo is one of them, nicely. Um, and uh, mi is the personal pronoun ja in dative case. So uh, ja becomes mi in dative. 
So we've got a, an adverb and a personal pronoun here in this expression. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that this video analysis gave you a better insight into what kind of expressions and grammar were used in the first episode. And please do check out two additional uh, videos. The first one on the basic greetings and the farewells and the second one on the pronunciation and spelling of all the words used in the first episode. Thank you very much. Dziękuję.